It is true a hurricane made landfall on Hilton Head Island in 1898. Adam Fripp, the lighthouse keeper at the time, lived with his daughter Caroline Fripp in the cottage. Working desperately during the height of the storm, Fripp allegedly suffered a fatal heart attack while in the lighthouse tower. His daughter, wearing a bright blue summer dress, found him before he died. As the wind howled about the swaying tower, Fripp, in his dying wish, implored his daughter to keep the light burning no matter how dangerous the storm. This she did, throughout the storm and for several days after. Sloshing through hip deep water to climb a tower to replenish the lanterns many times. She had to climb the 112 stairs and over the dead body of her father until help finally arrived. The legend goes that she died of exhaustion and sorrow days later. It is said that the image of Caroline Fripp, also known as the Blue Lady or Lady in Blue, can sometimes be seen near the cottage now located in Harpertown. And the chilling sounds of crying and wailing can be heard coming from the skeleton light tower still standing in Palmetto Dunes. Listen on as we hear more about this chilling tale. Hi, Facebook friends and library friends. It's Miss Drew out here in Hilton Head Island with Dee Phillips of the Heritage Library. She is the co-chairperson of the History Department. And she's going to tell us about this amazing lighthouse behind us, a little bit about that, a little bit about the um, area that we're in here in Hilton Head Island, and most of all, she's going to tell us about the myth or legend of the Blue Lady. So I'm going to let Dee start to tell us a little bit about that, and hope you guys enjoy our segment on the Blue Lady of Hilton Head Island. The Leamington Lighthouse, you can see just behind me. It is a cast iron structure. It's 92 feet tall. And it was started in 1863 by the Union troops. Now the importance to us today is because we want to talk about the Blue Lady. So we need to know where this myth came from. Um, there were lighthouse keepers here. And the lighthouse keepers, of course, would go up the steps. There's 112 steps to this lighthouse. We'll go up the steps carrying the oil that would help to start the wicks, the oil for the wicks, and they would use a torch to light. And then, of course, behind that, that would be the top cylinder on the, on the uh, lighthouse. Behind that would uh, be a, a reflection, a disc that they could move to help with directions coming in. And it was really important coming in toward the Port Royal Sound to have a safe passageway. Now, as the keeper, and always one of my favorite trivia things is talking about the keepers, there were always the first keeper and an assistant keeper. And the first uh, keeper for this lot house was Sisson, S-I-S-S-O-N, I believe. And then, of course, we had several throughout the years that the Coast Guard has kept on record. The lighthouse keeper that I want to tell you about is Adam Fripp, and he would be about the time period just at the hurricane of 1898, okay? And so his part of his job um, is to light that wick, and they call many of the lighthouse keepers wickies because they had to trim those wicks and make sure that they were just perfect in order to light. So that's always the trivia that I love. But another part of it is knowing that that lighthouse keeper had to carry those oil drums up those 112 steps, not only to the place where he would be able to stand out and oversee, but then going up even further to take the oil and then light and make sure that that was a functioning lighthouse. Again, there's very few of these cast iron today. In fact, this is one of the only ones remaining. Would it now, be heavy to carry those? What you said the well, how they carried the oil up the oh, stairs? Oh, they're gallon jugs, yes. And that there is a building that's located, a brick building that would have been very near. It's over in the back from the lighthouse, and it held 450 gallon cans. Wow. So they're going to have to carry so many up a day, and most of them would make two trips a night to get enough up and up into the top part and so that they could use that through the night to keep the light going, keep the oil in the, uh, with the wick. So not something that you would 
think it, uh, typically would be easy for a child or younger person no. to carry or lug up no. those 112 stairs. Nor myself. <laughs> <laughs> right. I would not be able to do that. So those lighthouse keepers probably had some they probably pretty strong did. arms. And they had many other duties, but again, that was the two main ones at the time. Now, um, Adam Fripp had a daughter, Caroline. He had lost his wife. And so he was uh, the lighthouse keeper at the time that you're going to have the 1898 hurricane, which was a huge hurricane on this island. Uh, huge, the, the water swarms and things like this coming in, the winds, everything reported it to be severe. They had also just clear cut some timber and so those timber logs would have acted just like a battering ram up against ships and things like this. So it was really important that that lighthouse, that the light be kept lit during this uh, hurricane. And Fripp also knew that there were some ships out there that needed to get home or to get to safe places. So he goes into the lighthouse, tells his daughter Caroline, that he's going to go over and he's got to go up in the top and make sure that that light is lit. And he goes and climbs the 112 steps. And of course, hours later, Caroline notices from the cottage that her father has not come home and she becomes worried and she can see some of the water coming in and other things along on the grounds. So she goes over to help, see if she can help and to find him and she climbs the stairs. And of course, he's at the top and the light has gone out. And so he tells her quickly to take the torch and to light it. And he also tells her, you've got to do my duty for me. You have to keep the light going. And then he passes out. And we do know that he dies while he is there. Well, we don't know for sure, but the myth tells us. And just to, be, uh, to clarify, there's several myths that circulate, some of them have her helping carry him back down to the cottage, which is probably impossible for a young girl. And it also has stories of him lasting several days and also her. So there's all kinds of myths with it. This is the one that seems to be the most common. It makes the most sense too. It makes the most sense. And I'm sense. gonna ask you that next. So um, you say that she was a young girl. I just want our um, patrons to understand how, how young about this person was that we're gonna be talking about. We're not talking about an older man in his 80s and his 60 year old daughter no ages we're, give her somewhere around 14 about, about 14. 14 so we're talking a teenage girl here trying to go up and down these stairs with those huge well, heavy gallon drums well the gallon drums are there but she may have had to make a trip on her own back keep it lit. yeah we yeah. do not know if he made all of these trips now one of the things that you need to know too is that whenever she left to go over there she was dressed in a blue dress which is where the blue part comes from the blue lady okay. and they know that she was in the blue dress well this or? is the myth that we see okay. that she was found in a blue dress okay so it would make sense that she was dressed in it going over now um when she gets there and again she keeps the light going and all through the night and it was probably close to three days when they finally get there because, number one, again, this was a horrible hurricane. Uh, number two, we know that her father had passed away and, it, and they probably could not have gotten to her any sooner. She's safest in that lighthouse. You know, this is a cast iron, 92 feet high, so it's a very strong, it's with... Uh, it has endured many things besides that, even an earthquake. Wow. So they're very, very strong. So when they do find her, they find that she has also passed away, uh, probably from exhaustion. There are some myths that talk about her going back home and she's got pneumonia because of the storm. The windows are broken out, so she was probably being battered by rain. And that does make some sense. But most of it, uh, most, if you believe in the, the myth where it is, is that she was passed, she passed away there with her father. 
So was that storm that came through that year, was that in like the summer, the fall, the spring, winter? It's hurricane season. So hurricane season <laughs> is now. Now. And according to the myth, by the way, it is in hurricane season that you tend to see the blue lady the most. Okay. Whenever the wind blows and whenever there is a storm, she seems to have her spirit want to roam. Uh, so now, and, and one of the things is there was a co her cottage, her father and her cottage was very close to this lighthouse, but it was moved okay. uh, when Charles Frazier was building sea pines. He had the cottage moved down to Harbor Town, and it is an active bakery, sandwich shop, place to get coffee, place to sit and enjoy. It's very lovely. That's down very close to the restaurant Sea Cubes that's near Harbor Town. And again, sometimes when the Blue Lady roams, there are also sightings there. So you can see sightings in Lim Leamington where she would be going back and forth around by the lighthouse over to the oil. Or she would, in um, down near Harbor Town at the cottage, wander out. Some have seen her reflection at night when, when uh, the store is closed, when the bakery is closed, looking out, mm -hmm. many have heard around the cottage some crying, uh, possibly that this is her being sad with the loss of her father. This cottage was the original White Housekeeper's Cottage constructed on the Battery in Charleston, South Carolina. The cottage with its scenic views overlooking the Charleston Battery, Fort Sumter, and the Ashley and Cooper Rivers was residence of generations of lighthouse keepers in Charleston. The lighthouse keeper was responsible for maintaining and operating the Charleston Lighthouse, which was used as a navigational aid for hundreds of merchant ships arriving from England. The cottage was transported to Palmetto Dunes on Hilton Head Island during World War II. It was used to monitor German submarine activity along the South Carolina coast during the war. The cottage was moved to Harbor Town in 1965 and restored to its former southern splendor. It's been said that sometimes the phone will ring inside the cottage and no one will be there to answer. The shopkeepers and others believe that this is Caroline Fripp calling for help. The dirt road that led down to the bakery, to the cottage that uh, uh, Charles Frazier moved, was uh, traveled then very sparingly. But we do have some stories about teenagers who were out on that lonely road and going down and of course seeing a blue spirit type figure going back and forth and they sat there scared and then they ran home and told their parents about it immediately uh, their parents actually the way the other myth goes is that they came to see for themselves and they also experienced it so the blue lady legend has grown with many many types of things. Most of it has been sightings. Most of it with the sounds, again, the crying, thinking that Caroline is, you know, is, is missing her father. Others have been a little bit more playful. There's also some uh, oddities that are associated with the Blue Lady. For example, the CQ restaurant that's there. There's stories about CQ, uh, one of the chefs, closing up at night and thinking that he forgot something, went back in and found all the burners on and he swore that he turned them off. Um, going out, of course, could see the blue lady's image over in the cottage and that was enough to shake anyone at the time. But also there was a payphone that was installed when we first got telephone service on the island and the payphone would ring and ring and ring and ring until someone would pick it up and answer it and then of course there was no one on the line. So the myth has it that Caroline perhaps was calling for help at that time. That one gave me the chills. So. <laughs> this brick oil house was constructed for the Hilton Head Rear Range Lighthouse, also known as Leamington Lighthouse in 1892. Measuring 9 by 11 feet, this building is capable of storing up to 450 five-gallon cans. According to the legend, Adam Fripp died bringing oil from this oil house to the Leamington Lighthouse. Sightings of his daughter Caroline Fripp have been reported here on dark, rainy nights. So we're out here at the oil house next to the lighthouse, and Dee's going to tell us a little bit about the oil house and its relevance to Caroline Fripp and 
Uh, also, we're going to walk the path that she may have possibly walked had she been the one having to carry those oil drums from the oil house to the lighthouse. So if you'll tell us about that, Ms. D. Right. Uh, and this would have been where the lighthouse keeper, too, would have made this journey at night to fill. But Caroline, um, again, it's going to hold 450 five-gallon cans. And Caroline would have walked from here to the lighthouse and carried. So those are very, very heavy. Um, one of the things I would like to point out is that the plaques that are around this area are, are wonderful. And they have many of the mist toad uh, on them. And this one talks about, remember I said there were many myths? But this one talks about the fact that Caroline, when she was making this journey back and forth, and carrying things that for several days, several days, she would have to walk through this hip, deep water to get over to the lighthouse. And again, that she would replenish the oil, but she passes away several days later due to exhaustion. Now, I, I totally you know, agree this is part of one of the myths. I just have this thing about feeling as if she might have passed away there. And I think that's what's so wonderful about myths because you can tweak just a little bit because again, there are so many things. It's part of a little bit of truth that starts and changes. Right. And so it's wonderful to be able to do that. But I uh, do agree that it was exhaustion and this young lady was unable to to go through that with everything that she she had you know, lost. She lost her mother, then she loses her father this way and it has to take care of everything yeah. on her own. So you can see the journey that she would have taken and she would have walked this distance. Doesn't seem like very much, but if she truly was walking back and forth with that much water around her, right. it's very hard to walk through water. If, if, uh, yes, I would imagine that from a hip deep water, a small child, well, she's not going to be very big, but I mean, even at the age, you wouldn't think she's not going to be any bigger than us. No, I, I think I'm the same height as I was when I was 14. Yeah. But she would have come up here, and then she would have had to make steps, 112 steps, to get the rest of the oil all the way to the top. And of course, the first thing you see is the platform where either the lighthouse keeper or, in this case, Caroline is going to be able to look out and hopefully see uh, that the ships are safe, and then above that is where the oil room is, where they would have to light the wick. Okay, so, so you that still first, have further to go. So that window right there is where she would be able to look out? No, up on the platform. Okay, so up there, way at the top. You have to walk all the way up there with the drum. Yeah, that one you can hand. walk around and see. The window is simply so many of the steps that you would get up and be able to see. But because of the cast iron and the cylinder, uh, cylinder form of it, you're not going to see very much out of that. Right. Wow. That is Wonderful a long statue. way. And you can see these that come down. They are bolted in. And I believe these go, I believe the bolts go down. I mean, the cement goes down that they're bolted into like six feet. Those are some big so They're not too. going to come out. It's not going to come out. That's a bolt. <laughs> Also located near the Lemington Lighthouse are the Lemington Live Oak and the Cistern. The Lemington Live Oak stands close to the Hilton Head Rear Range Lighthouse and provides a magnificent backdrop for the 15th green of the Arthur Hill Golf Course. The tree stands approximately 70 feet tall and has a canopy that spreads across 150 feet with a diameter of about 9 feet. Calculations estimate the age of this tree to be between 435 and 450 years old recognizing this as one of the oldest living trees of its kind on Hilton Head Island. The cistern was built alongside the oil house for collection of rainwater to support lighthouse operations. A cistern is a type of container used to hold liquids and this particular tank is made of brick capable of holding up to 3,500 gallons of water. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up for the day and let Miss D and her friend Barbara go on about their dinners and things like that that they have planned for tonight. And uh, we just want to say thank you so much for taking the opportunity to visit with us and share with us this amazing uh, tale here in Hilton Head Island. 
and I want to make sure that we kind of like you know let everybody know where and what you guys are about too because um, just like us there's some amazing things that the Heritage Library does just like our library does so um, if you could tell them maybe um, if they want to visit the library when you guys get open back up everything's good and a website maybe that they could visit and if there's any way that they can donate or um, help your library out like they do ours okay we are open but we are limited numbers uh, open we are located at 2 Corpus Christi we are we on, on a website of course and that's probably the easiest way to find out information it's uh, heritagelib.org heritagelib.org and we are a history and genealogy research library so if you're interested in genealogy you can come down and do genealogy research you can join as a member we have a uh, membership that is $85 and you can get everything that we have you can do some from home and some not but the nice thing about it is that you can work with our genealogist um, one-on-one -on -one, and they will take you from the start or they will take you in the middle of something uh, they are wonderful they're from all over the country retirees and come down and they donate their time one day a week we are obviously a nonprofit uh, I again am with the history department and the history department does tours we have two national registered properties we have the Zion Cemetery and we have Fort Mitchell where we do with living history characters we do presentations and tours for families for groups for uh, people on the island our uh, Zion is on Tuesdays our Fort Mitchell is on Thursday and then of course we do all kinds of presentations whether during the day or at night for different groups awesome awesome and if they wanted to just make a donation to uh, the library how could they go about doing that they can actually do it online they could also uh, by mail of course and our address again is on the website could do we are um, definitely classified as preservationists so it is an ongoing process of finding the money to take care of National Register properties and make sure that history is told so um, I would encourage I would love to have any of them come and visit us all right okay so if you're around this area and you'd love to come check out some of the things around here and talk to Miss D or one of her awesome friends over there at the library don't forget to stop by there libraries are a multitude of amazing information you know how I feel about that so I'm just gonna tell her thank you again I thank you so much give them gonna give her a little elbow bump because of the COVID <laughs> and uh, thank you guys so much for all you do oh, and for sharing welcome. all of this information with you're us. welcome and thank Lemington also yes for and thank you Lemington for allowing us today to come onto the property. You guys have a great weekend. We will see you again next week as we go and visit another place in South Carolina to tell you the legends and myths of this area. Goodbye everyone, have a great weekend.